In this short lecture, we will be examining the physical geography of Vietnam, and we'll be considering the ways in which the environment and the landscape of Vietnam have influenced the history of the region. The map on your left is a topographic image of Southeast Asia. Note the mountains in the northern and western parts of the country, which have served to uh, isolate the region somewhat from the rest of Asia. Vietnam runs about a thousand miles in length from north to south, while at its narrowest the country is as little as 30 miles wide in some of the central coastal regions. Uh, forests previously covered about three-fourths of the country, uh, but deforestation has reduced that figure to about 25 percent by the year 1980. Much of the deforestation uh, took place with the use of chemical defoliants such as the notorious Agent Orange, which we'll talk about later in this course, that was utilized by the U.S. Army during the Vietnam War. Um, however, commercial logging and the use of trees as fuel by peasants also have played roles in deforestation. There are two rivers that played especially important roles in Vietnam's history. The Red River is a relatively short river at about 700 miles in length. Its source is in southern China. The Red River flows uh, through the Vietnamese capital of Hanoi. Actually, um, Hanoi is on the right bank of the river, so it doesn't technically flow through the river, but uh, it empties into the Gulf of Tonkin. Each year, the Red River Delta expa expands a few dozen yards into the Gulf of Tonkin due to the sediment carried by the Red River. The Mekong, which you can see running north to south, is the world's 10th longest river. It's also the 7th longest in Asia. It's a little over 3,000 miles in length. The name of the Mekong River is from the Thai language, and it translates roughly as Mother of Water. There are extreme seasonal variations in the, the river flow of the Mekong, and the presence of rapids and numerous waterfalls make navigation extremely difficult, especially over greater distances. Considerable stretches of the Mekong River are not navigable to larger commercial vessels, especially at certain times of the year. The source, again, of the Mekong River is in the Tibetan Plateau, and the accumulated sediment carried in the Mekong gets deposited in the Mekong Delta in southern Vietnam. Each year, the Mekong Delta grows uh, due to the accumulations of new sediment deposits, though the rate of expansion of the Delta has slowed somewhat uh, due to some dams that have been built on the Mekong. This might be reducing the, uh, the deposition of sediment in the South China Sea. In this satellite image, you can make out uh, sediment from the Mekong along the coast of the South China Sea, and there's a greenish tint as well, which is uh, evidence of the plentiful uh, phytoplankton in the waters. The phytoplankton need minerals that the River Delta provides, especially things like iron. Um, and the phytoplankton, in turn, are consumed by a wide variety of sea creatures. I keep getting into my head uh, the SpongeBob character plankton every time I see the word. Sorry for that. The Mekong Delta is often called the rice bowl of Vietnam. There are approximately 17 million people who live in the Mekong River Delta. There are 12 Vietnamese provinces there. Um, about 80% of the population in the Mekong Delta um, are engaged in um, some form of rice cultivation, and the Delta accounts for approximately one half of the country's total rice production. This map displays the population density of Vietnam in 2010. As you can see, the areas of densest population can be found in the Red River Delta, the Mekong River Delta, and along the coastlines. There are just under 90 million people in Vietnam as of 2012. The country is, is the 13th largest in the world in terms of population. Um, interestingly, the rate of growth of the population has started to slow in the past decade. Um, this is uh, in part um, due to the emerging middle class in that country. Um, from 20, or excuse me, 2002 to 2012, the middle class increased from about 7 million people to approximately 25 million people in 2012. 
Many Westerners have the misunderstanding that the entirety of Vietnam is hot and humid. This is in part due to some of the films we've watched over the years. However, there's quite a range of climates in Vietnam. Climate is rather warm and humid all year round for much of uh, southern and central Vietnam, but highland regions are much more temperate. The powerful storms and frequent typhoons that are features of the coastal regions from July to November are exemplified by the satellite image of uh, Super Typhoon Bofa, which is, uh, as th at the time <laughs> that I uh, have recorded this in December of 2012, uh, was hurtling toward the coast of uh, Vietnam. Um, I don't know what the difference between a typhoon and a super typhoon is, but I'm not sure I want to be in the middle of one to find out. Um, however, northern Vietnam, getting back on track here, um, has a distinct cool season. Uh, the north monsoon sends, sends south colder air in from China. Um, there are parts of northern Vietnam where frost and even some snow may occur um, in the mountainous ranges. Uh, winter months in the north, which run from about November to January, can be a little on the cool side. There are many places in which you would need uh, layers of clothing, although certainly nothing like we would have here in northwest Ohio. Um, in southern Vietnam, the lowland regions are protected from these uh, types of outbreaks of colder northern air. Uh, the dry season is uh, warm to hot with a lot of sunshine. A typical summer day in the south would be in the mid-90s with high humidity. As I hinted in the last slide, the weather and climate in Vietnam are heavily influenced by the competing monsoon seasons in the region. This map shows um, the directions of the various monsoons. The southwest monsoon lasts from about April to September, and the northeast monsoon goes from October to early April. So southern Vietnam sees the majority of its annual precipitation between May and October, peaking about June. Uh, northern Vietnam receives much of its rainfall from May to October, but August is typically the wettest month each year in the north. And as a general rule of thumb, somewhere in Vietnam at any given moment, it's monsoon season. So they do differ you know, throughout the course of the year. Some place it's either in monsoon season or it's in the rainy season for that, uh, that region. This map shows the common names of the various geographical regions of Vietnam. The regions we will be uh, most frequently referencing in this course are the coastal regions, the Red River Delta, the Mekong Delta, and the, the Central Highlands. The Central Highlands region is an area of uh, rather jagged mountain peaks. Uh, widespread forests and uh, relatively fertile soil. The highlands contain about 20% of Vietnam's farmlands and over 22% of its total forested area. The highland regions of Vietnam are, are generally cooler and a little less humid. They tend to be somewhat isolated from the rest of the country due to the rugged terrain, although the government in the past few years has been making an effort to relocate people either displaced from coastal regions or um, where there's overcrowding into these central highland regions. In some regions of the central highlands as well as other parts of uh, Vietnam, Vietnamese agriculturalists have developed innovative methods to maximize land use and land productivity. Pictured here are terraced rice paddies which allow farmers to grow rice on the sides of mountains and steep hills where otherwise few crops could be grown. The northern highlands region is an area of mountains that at times approach an almost vertical angle. Um, the soaring summits of the northwest mountains are eastern extensions, far eastern extensions of the Himalayas. Pictured here is a peak in northwestern Vietnam that is part of the Huang Lian mountain range. I have the spelling on the slide. Yes, I do. Uh, most of the ethnic minority groups in Vietnam, with the exception of the Champa, C-H-A-M-P-A, and the Mon, M-O-N, can be found in this region. There's uh, dozens of distinct ethnic groups. Uh, the northeastern mountains, we, we were previously talking about the northwestern mountains, the northeastern mountains are much lower in height. They are uh, largely composed of limestone. 
and uh, there are many karst deposits in this region. Pictured here is an example in uh, northeastern Vietnam of a karst formation. Uh, karst formations are created by the dissolving of layers of soluble bedrock, usually some type of carbonate, such as limestone or dolomite. Limestone is probably the most common um, substance that makes up karst formations around the world. Uh, typically this occurs through rainfall, although sometimes waterways can create karst formations. Uh, this map shows some of the major cities of Vietnam that we'll be discussing during the semester. I have uh, placed stars by three cities that will be re referenced many times in the course. Uh, Hanoi, which is to the north or the top of the map, was the capital of North Vietnam and is the current capital of the unified nation of Vietnam. Hanoi, which today has approximately six and a half million people, in its metropolitan area has long been an important political center in Vietnam. In the middle of the map is Hue, which was the capital during the, during the uh, Win Dynasty from 1802 to 1945. Uh, to the south or the bottom of the map is Ho Chi Minh City, which was for, formerly known as Saigon. This is the largest city in Vietnam with a metropolitan area approaching 10 million people. And this brings to a close our brief look at the geography of Vietnam.